To ensure beekeeping operation is strong and productive, you need robust and well-developing bee colonies. In today's condition, having a proper stimulation strategy is essential for achieving this. Of course, it's not the only factor, but it's a very important step. In this video, we'll talk about the stimulation process and the quantities involved, what type of syrup we use, when we use it, and at what con concentration and amount to get the best results. Hi, I am Oscar, and in this video, we'll discuss all of these details. Stay until the end to get a full understanding of our stimulation methods. The first and most important point is that we'll break the topic of stimulation into two parts. First, we'll talk about the stimulation essentially means, and then I'll show you the uh, traditional stimulation method. In the second half of the video, he'll introduce the intelligent method. Let's get straight into it. What does stimulation means in beekeeping? When we talk about stimulation or uh, stimulatory feeding, we cannot ignore the individual needs of the bees. For bees to develop properly, stay balanced and maintain a strong immune system, they need several essential things. The most important of these are amino acids, minerals, fats and sugars. Bees get this vital nutrition from two main sources in nature. Nectar provides the sugar bees need for energy, which is essential for various functions such as flying, collecting nectar, gathering pollen, producing royal jelly, operating their glands and processing food by creating enzymes. To build a strong immune system and ensure their bodies function optimally, bees need lipids, amino acids and minerals which they gather from various pollens. For a bee colony to process and effectively use pollen while staying healthy, both of these elements are essential. This is why when we talk about stimulation or stimulatory feeding, we mean both aspects. Both the energy source, nectar and syrup, and the protein source, pollen, pollen substitutes and protein supplements are crucial. If we only perform syrup stimulation, it's essentially just food supplementation and cannot be considered full stimulation because it lacks the elements found in pollen. There are no peptides, amino acids, for or minerals. The same is true if we only provide patties for their protein needs. In this case, they lack the energy required to process the protein, which comes from nectar or syrup. So, whenever I mention stimulation, I mean a complete and balanced approach using pollen, and protein supplements, patties, alongside syrup, simultaneously to achieve the best results. Now that we clarified this, let's move on and talk about how to implement this in the most effective way. The method for preparing patties will be covered in a separate video, so if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification, and while you're there, give this video a like and share it with others. But let's keep moving and start with the traditional stimulation methods. It'll show you an advanced version 
where we carry out complex stimulation, not just food replacement or food supplementation. Traditional stimulation is done by giving the colonies a patty occasionally and larger amounts of syrup, around to a half to a liter syrup every two to three days, depending on the colony strength. In better cases, bags are used for syrup distribution. However, the method is outdated and not the most effective approach. The bucket system is a step forward, but from my experience, they are even better and more efficient solutions which I'll cover in detail in the second half of this video. So, traditional stimulation ends here, giving a larger batch of syrup uh, two to three times a week and providing a single pollen substitute patty of any kind. We took this method further with the basic version of our stimulation system, which we started building in uh, 2016 and finalized in 2018 with the first working and highly effective version. A video series about setting up the whole stimulation system will soon be available on this channel. In the meantime, give this video a like and let's move forward. Our strategy was to create the best patties tailored to the bees developmental needs and ensure they were consistently available to the colonies. Typically we followed this schedule. From November to February we used fumagillin infused patties to combat and eliminate nosema. From March to October we used the same high protein pollen substitute patties but without fumagillin. This was further supported by syrup introduced throughout the stimulation system, which the colonies received daily. With this system, it only took two to three minutes per station to stimulate up to 180 colonies. During the growth period, the colonies always had access to pollen and protein substitute patties, while each morning they were given two to 300 milliliters of syrup adjusted to their consumption. I'll take more about syrup concentration at the end of this video. This enhanced version of traditional stimulation was used with outstanding efficiency from 2018 to 2024. The patties weighed around 400 to 600 grams and once 95% uh, of patty was consumed, it was replaced with a new one. Syrup stimulation was provided daily with 2 to 3 millilit 300 milliliters of syrup. This consistent method allowed your colonies to grow rapidly and explosively. And it also supported to the quick and dynamic development of swarms. However, there came a point when we were tired to going off the apiary every morning just to start the stimulation system for one to three minutes. That's when we began thinking about improvements. Up until then, our stimulation system ran on 220 volts, but it was time to optimize the process. As you can see, this slightly improved stimulation method required constant presence in the apiary. Yes, it brought great results, but we wanted more. That's when we started brainstorming and developing a new technologies to take things to the next level. And no, that I've introduced the system we've been working with so far, let's move on to the completely new solution, intelligent stimulation methods. As I mentioned earlier, we've been working on developing multiple systems and it became clear that a smarter solution was needed. We designed a system that not only keeps the colonies warm during the spring development period, but also provides the best possible stimulation while allowing us to monitor and manage the entire process remotely, even from a tablet at home. Of course, this uh, 
doesn't eliminate the beekeeper's presence in the apiary, but this development has made it possible to achieve a level of stimulation that would be almost impossible to perform manually. Not to mention avoiding the constant need to open hives, which disrupts the colony's microclimate and results in the heat loss. If you've been paying close attention, you noticed I mentioned a system that keeps the colonies warm while also delivering exceptional stimulation. I go into more details about the warming system in a future video, but for now, let's focus on the stimulation solution. Pollen substitute and protein patties are always available to the colonies. We've further improved the quality of your patties, making them even better. We also use them to deliver treatments, which saves us time and effort. For example, treatments for nosema and charbrood can now be applied effectively and effortlessly. With the intelligent stimulation system, we can deliver syrup either manually or through programmed intervals via an application. We've upgraded the dripper nozzles to a smaller one, enabling us to closely replicate natural nectar flow. Now we can deliver syrup at a rate of 50 milliliters per minute per colony, ensuring precision. As I mentioned in the previous video, these systems allow us to program up to 10 feeding sessions per day, delivering anywhere between 15 to 500 milliliters of uh, syrup for each colony. To imitate natural nectar flow, we program the stimulation system to distribute feeding intervals between 6 a.m. to, p, uh, to 8 p.m., creating a consistent and efficient feeding schedule that supports optimal colony development. This system allows us to achieve the best possible colony development even better than the bucket solution, especially during the spring growth period and when prepare swarms for overwintering. Each dose delivered by the stimulation system triggers a brief orientation flight in the colony, increasing pollen collection which further boosts their development. The only thing to keep in mind is to periodically refill the uh, 150 liter syrup tanks. To prevent the syrup from fermenting or spoiling, use a preservative puder. Based on your experience, this also helps combat charbrood as the preservative in the syrup prevents fungal growth and in turn slow the development and a spread of charbrood. While this isn't guaranteed, our tests so far support this conclusion. Additionally, you can use hive alive or grapefruit extract to prevent fermentation depending on your preference. That said, the big question is, what syrup do we use and uh, in what concentration? Subscribe to the channel to ensure you don't miss anything, hit the like button and Let's get into the details. The composition of the syrup can vary. There is no strict rule. We've avoided using sugar syrup for over 10 years. We started using inverted syrup in 2006 and fully switched to corn syrup in 2011 for both stimulation and overwintering. It's called F14 and due to its higher fructose content, it doesn't crystallize which is excellent for us. Plus, it's 100% inverted, which is the most important factor for us. I know some people may not agree with this, but that's okay. Everyone has their own method. I'm just sharing what we do and you can decide what works best for you. Let's also touch on sugar syrup. 
which can also be used with the intelligent stimulation systems. During the first part of the autumn stimulation period, which in your cl climate and weather conditions is from late July to late September. Beekeepers often use thinner syrup. This could be a one-to-one -one ratio, one liter of water for one kilogram of sugar, or two-to-one ratio, two liters of water to one kilogram of sugar. Later as overwintering preparation wraps up in late September and early October, beekeepers typically switch to thicker, one-to-two ratio. One liter of water and two kilogram of sugar. During the spring stimulation cycle, we use the tiniest syrup for stimulation since brood rearing also required water. Additionally, we want the bees to process and deplete some of the leftover winter stores. Here we use a two to one ratio, two liters of water to one kilogram of sugar, or even three to one ratio. I thought I don't recommend that uh, later. This two to one ratio, two liter of water and one kilogram of sugar can also be supplied to stimulate swarms continuing until mid-September. At that point, you can switch to a thicker syrup and reverse the ratio to one to two, one liter of water to two kilogram of sugar. Very thick syrup is not ideal because the stimulation system can't deliver it to the colonies and it uh, could damage the pump we use. Let's look at the mixing ratio for corn syrup which we use and wholeheartedly recommend. During autumn stimulation, August to September, spring stimulation, February to April, and swarm stimulation, May to September, we use the same mixture, a two to one ratio, two liters of water to one liter of uh, F14 corn syrup. For overwintering in October, we adjust to a one to one ratio, one liter of water to one liter of F14 corn syrup. So, the stimulation system can handle it. We also use the bucket method when it's too cold for the bees to access the feeders. Typically, in late autumn, uh, late October and early spring, January to February. Everything depends on the weather. When the temperature rises above to 20 Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit and the bees cluster start to loosen, the stimulation system begins. Below the temperature, temperature, we rely on the bucket method. This is your fully combined stimulation approach. Finally, one very important addition before we wrap up. But first, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything. Whether we are using the stimulation system at temperature, temperatures above 10 Celsius or the bucket method, we always add essential elements to your syrup. This supports the bee health and development of all times during stimulation. There are many things we use, so perhaps we'll cover the full list and quantities in another video. For now, let me mention the most important ones. These ingredients aren't just added to the syrup, but are also included in our patties. We add wormwood extract, propolis tincture, yellow flower extract, mint extract, and other herbal extracts, all currently in uh, alcohol-based form. We also include minerals such as cobalt, uh, manganese, and magnesium, as well as thymol. This is how our complex stimulation looks, along with the concentration and quantities we use. If you have any question, don't forget that the comment section is always open. Let's continue the conversation there and I'll gladly answer any question I can. If you want to learn more about the timing and the scheduling of stimulation, make sure to subscribe my channel. A great video on this topic will appear here soon. See you there. Until next time, keep buzzing.